Hi, my name is Jenna Ryan with Self Love You. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is kind of a dovetail on my series, my three part series on how to stop seeking nurture from the betrayal source. And today I want to talk about how to stop making excuses for the betrayal source. Because it is a great tendency for people who grew up in abusive environments, some may know about it and some may still be in denial about it, but there's a great tendency to make excuses for the abuser, to make excuses for the person who is causing the pain. There's just a great tendency to do that. But this excuses that you make in your own mind about why another person is abusing you keeps you locked into the relationship where you're being mistreated. It's really hard sometimes to detach and walk away from someone who is being abusive towards you. This can, I would say, is one of the very hardest things in the world to do, especially if you're really attached to this person and you really love this person and you really have a lot invested in the relationship and especially if you put a lot of importance on relationships and your self-worth is tied into the relationship itself. Detaching from an abuser can be the, one of the hardest things in the world. Very, very painful. Unbelievably painful. You can lie in bed and cry for days and eat ice cream and, and, and just really wish that it would all go away. So what happens whenever people are abused, even subtly in small ways, and even some people in big ways being abused, physically beaten, or even other ways where women um, are with men who abuse their children, um, what happens is, is that there's a denial process that goes on in the head of someone, male or female, who is being abused and who doesn't want to be abused and doesn't want to admit the abuse and wants to do anything to keep the person, the abuser. What they will do is, is, is something that children do, and that is to take the blame for the abuse. Take the blame for the abuse. And the way you take the blame for the abuse many times or most of the time is by justifying it with your brain, your cerebral cortex, justifying the behavior justifying the negative behavior and making excuses for the person who is doing wrong to you. Making excuses. This could be anything from, well, my mom, um, she didn't mean to leave me alone when I was little all the time. She had work to do. Um, my, my father didn't mean to not come to any of my softball games when I was growing up. He had another family to take care of. Um, my friend didn't mean to put me in a headlock the other night. She was just excited. My ex-boyfriend didn't, or let's say my boyfriend didn't mean to knock me up against the wall the other day. And this didn't happen, I'm just saying. Didn't knock me up against the wall the other day. He was just in a bad mood. Or... Well, he did that. However, he did break up with me and just leave me high and dry. But, you know, I did get on his nerves. That's what I hear a lot of. Or, you know, there's a few things I did right before that happened that, that caused him to be upset. For some reason, it's very easy for a codependent person, someone who needs to heal, or somebody who has borderline personality disorder, or somebody who is really uh, has PTSD, or somebody who was abused as a child, somebody who has CPTSD. It's very easy for those types of people to, it's very easy for us to take the blame, take the blame for somebody else. And I have finally gotten to the place in my healing journey where I don't take the blame and it feels so amazing. Oh my gosh. But now that I've gotten to a point where I don't do that anymore, to my knowledge, as bad, I can see it in other people and I watch them take the blame for everything. You know, oh, he didn't show up for Christmas dinner. He didn't call. He didn't text, even though we were together every single day. But that's probably because he has some emotional issues that he needs to work through. Or 
he wasn't able to tell me that he cared about me because he has some emotional issues or she wasn't able to be sexual with me because you know of this or that or the other there's just all of these excuses 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 it's like dude get rid of the excuses enough with the excuses it's not your fault if someone is abusive towards you if someone just leaves you after they built you up and and acted like they loved you and and you know done everything to show you that they care and then all of a sudden one day they rip the rug out from under you there's no excuse for that there's nothing you could have possibly done really look at it now sometimes there's things we can do I mean literally I mean I mean really perhaps you know if you do something vindictive and awful but people make mistakes and if you use that as an excuse for their behavior and allow it to go on without some sort of apology and some sort of healing and some sort of reconciliation, then you're just making excuses. Like let's say if your boyfriend who you adore does something to you that shoves you or hits you, okay? There's no excuse. There's nothing in the world that you could have done to deserve to be hit. Nobody deserves to be hit. You don't deserve to be hit. Nobody is bad enough to be hit. Nobody's bad enough to be just left high and dry. A real relationship involves two people talking with one another, discussing their feelings, and working things out. If someone hits you, they need to be put in jail because that's against the law. You're not allowed to hit other people. And if somebody emotionally abuses you and emotionally abandons you, even though an adult cannot be abandoned, what I'm talking about is somebody who just gets you all worked up. There are people out there that will get you all worked up and get you excited about a relationship with them and then leave you high and dry and then go through that cycle over and over and over again. It's called the cycle of abuse. My point for this video is just stop making excuses. It's not your fault that someone else has issues with alcohol. It's not your fault that someone else hits you. It's not your fault that someone else emotionally abuses you. It's not your fault that someone screams at you for no reason. It's not your fault that someone builds up your expectations and then leaves you high and dry. You didn't do anything to deserve this. And so it's time to stop taking responsibility for that person, you, and the relationship. You're taking on too much, you're giving too much, and you're being overly responsible. It's time that we stand up and say, you know what, I love myself, and I know that I make mistakes, and I know that I'm not perfect. However, this behavior, abandoning the entire relationship, is not a good justification for whatever I did wrong. Or, you know, whatever. You just have to really look at yourself and say, you know what, I forgive myself. And I know it's not my fault. And you need to give the blame where the blame is due. Don't try to take the blame in order to keep the relationship alive. Because if you're taking blame to keep the relationship alive, the relationship is unequal. It's like this. And it will never work properly. It may You can stay together for, in, for 30 years like that. But at the end, it will end horribly. You're not being respected. You're being disrespected. And you deserve so much better than that. Stop taking the blame. It's not your fault. Stop making excuses. There's no excuse. I'm Jenna Ryan with Self Love You. Please share this video and um, like it and, and subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate you for leaving comments too. Talk to you soon.